Okay, this is part two of value stock analysis for uh, companies involved with the Internet of Things. Uh, I'm going to go through the same format that I did in part one, where we're going to be looking at the valuations uh, currently. Um, it's here in August of 2020. And um, we're going to be looking at the valuations of these companies relative to their uh, adjusted operating earnings. Um, their dividend yields, as well as their um, current valuations relative to the PEs that they've traded at before. We're going to look at five companies in this video. Uh, the first is ABB, then Cognix, Johnson Controls, PTC, and Rockwell Automation. We'll get right to it with ABB. ABB is a robotics company, and they deal a lot in the industrial automation. They make six-axis robots that you see in lots of different manufacturing processes, and then they have uh, lots of different products in, in the industrial automation space. They really exploded in the early 2000s, uh, 2004 to 2007, um, had this really big run-up, and you can see that the uh, price tracked earnings really well, and then um, basically been range-bound ever since then for about the last 10 years. Um, so right now the valuation's at the top of that range. Um, I'm gonna look at the five year time frame. That's the time frame that uses the three years in the past and two years in the future. So you can see that the analysts on this one are predicting uh, a drop in earnings. Um, and that's what's forecasted here. So that's why this valuation looks really stretched on the five year time frame. Again, if we look at the 10 year time frame, just to kind of jump around, you see a kind of similar thing. So if this estimate, you know, comes true, then this valuation looks very stretched. Either way, it would have to come up a good bit um, to sort of justify this, this current valuation. So we do look a little overvalued with ABB. Its earnings growth is, is not really impressive, 2.33%. Blended PE 27 right now, and in the five-year time frame, trading at 18.39. So looking at the aggregate scoring for ABB, um, we're looking pretty overvalued with a dividend yield 2.58%, really low earnings yield 2.33%, and then 32% uh, overvalued uh, gives us a really low negative score of 27%. So this is basically saying that ABB doesn't have the earnings right now or isn't forecasted to have the earnings growth that would justify uh, the PE that it's currently trading at. Next on our list is Cognex, which is a company that makes machine vision products. So these are some really interesting technologies that are used to capture and analyze different uh, visual indicators. They are used in automating different types of machinery, so allowing machines to see essentially different products in, in front of them or different parts and put them together. But again, similar to ABB, um, Cognex looks really stretched against its valuation. And uh, it also has a really uh, big dip in earnings forecasted uh, for this coming year. Obviously, this year, the forecasts, um, you know, uh, take them uh, for what they're worth. Um, that's what this, this software is plotting. But even if we were to kind of draw this PE, you know, up around this area um, and try and, you know, kind of look for, you know, a place where this, this valuation might make sense to us, um, it, either way you look at it, this one looks pretty stretched. So on five year, yeah, so we've got a pretty big gap here. Earnings are okay, uh, 6%, basically a dividend yield of zero, and we're paying, you know, right now $83 uh, dollars per uh, dollar of earnings for Cognex. So if we go to the aggregate scoring for Cognex, we're getting um, the lowest that we get, which is around negative 37. And next on the list is Johnson Controls. Uh, they offer products in building solutions, control systems, security, fire detection, all types of different uh, security and control systems. Not much to really get excited about with them. Uh, pretty low earnings growth of 2%, um, trading at a PE of 18.86. So basically there's going to be you know other companies out there that are going to be showing better earnings growth um, than, than Johnson Controls here trading at 18.86. And if we look back um, all time, it's been trading, um, you know, between 14 and 16. So uh, a PE of 18 is definitely a little bit on the higher side for Johnson Controls. So for Johnson Controls, the uh, really low earnings growth coupled with just being slightly overvalued gives us an aggregate score of negative 6.5. Next on the list is PTC which is a software products and services company. 
there's a lot of reasons why I like this one compared to some of the other companies. Um, these guys are a little bit more focused on the software side and services, so their margins are going to tend to be a little bit higher. Um, they have products that are involved with uh, design, flexibility, piping and cable design, life cycle management, um, and they've also shown some really incredible growth. If we're looking at the five-year time frame, the adjusted operating earnings is a whopping 26.9%. Uh, which is just really, really fantastic. They aren't giving out a dividend right now, um, and they are trading at a PE of 39. So, um, you know, a pretty high PE, but when you have earnings growth like this, um, it may be justified, right? So um, in this time period, they've been trading at a 54. Um, if we go back on a 10-year time frame, they were trading at 29, so they have bounced around a little bit, and that's the reason why we want to look at a couple different time frames. Um, they've been at 30 uh, all time, so you know, sitting at 40, yeah, I mean, the, the, the growth recently has been really outstanding. If they keep that growth up, then this stock could actually be a little bit undervalued right now. You know, if the if the earnings were to come back down and, and maybe not live up to the old expe uh, expectations, you could see that multiple contract a little bit. Um, but I really like uh, the valuation of PTC right now, and I'm probably going to look to um, uh, add a position into my portfolio for this company. So taking a look at the aggregate score for PTC, um, if we're using that five-year time frame, we've got an undervalued uh, rating of about 37.19 uh, yield from valuation. And then we also have that 26.9% earnings growth. So that gives us an aggregate score of 64%, which is really high for this type of metric. Last on the list is Rockwell Automation which is uh, one of the flagship names in this uh, industrial Internet of Things space. Um, they're focused on industrial automation, both on the hardware and software side. They make programmable con controllers um, and other human-to-machine interfaces. If you're looking at them off the lows, they have uh, really come a long way, more than 50% gain up from the lows in March and have just been on a really nice run uh, since about 2016. At this time, we have a similar case to ABB where we saw a forecasted dip in the uh, earnings growth from this company, from Rockwell. If we're looking at the five-year, we are pretty stretched um, beyond uh, the, what, the PE that this stock has uh, historically traded at. We've historically traded at somewhere around a 22.8, uh, and right now we're trading at a 30. Um, so just looking back a little bit further, like we've done on some of the others, to see uh, we were trading at a 20 on the 10-year, and then um, looking at all-time, we were trading at an 18. So Rockwell's been pretty steady on where it's um, traded in relationship to its earnings, so I would say this one's definitely a little too stretched um, to the upside for my liking. So looking at the aggregate scoring for Rockwell Automation, um, coming with a score of negative uh, 16.9. So looking just a little bit overvalued and again, not really having that earnings yield um, to justify the, the high multiple that it's, that it's trading at right now. So all in all, with a lot of these Internet of Things companies, we've seen uh, valuations really come a long way since the March lows. Some of these companies you could have maybe argued were overvalued before then and have just continued to go to the upside. Um, but I really find a, uh, a nice uh, bright spot in PTC, and we'll probably be investigating um, that company as a, a future long uh, position in my core portfolio. In my next videos, I'm going to be doing a similar analysis on companies involved with oil and gas. And I'll also be taking a look at my favorite companies using this analysis that I'm going to be adding um, during this next quarter. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when those videos are out. Thanks for watching.